time now for perspective. We've long been aware of the ravages of plastic pollution in our oceans, but it's only in recent years we've become aware of just how pervasive microplastics have become in the natural world, with tiny particles of the stuff turning up in such remote places as the Arctic and remote mountain ranges. A lot of what we know about this microscopic form of pollution is thanks to our guest today, oceans advocate and skipper Emily Penn. She's also the co-founder of all-female seaborne research project Project Expedition. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to us here on France 24 today. Could you start by telling me a little more about what Expedition is and why you set it up? So we set it up in 2014 because I had been out there and seen this microplastic that you described, these tiny fragments of plastic that are floating on the surface of the ocean that you can't see when you look at it. But when you take a fine mesh net across that surface, you realize that there are hundreds there. And um, so we set up this project to really find out more what's going on, how much is out there, and ultimately, where is it coming from? So X Expedition is a series of all female sailing voyages around the world looking at this issue to be able to really shed light on how do we take action, mostly here on land, to solve it. And from your research, just how worried should we be about uh, these microplastics in the world's oceans? Well, I think what we've discovered is that actually there's a lot more out there than we originally thought. Um, and the fact that it's breaking down into these little pieces means it's much, much harder to clean up. Uh, we also now suspect that a lot of it is sinking down to the seabed, um, which again, you know, in the depths of our ocean is very, very hard to then um, extract without damaging um, all of the incredible marine life, which is important in the ocean, uh, like the plankton that, that makes up most of what's on the surface. And so um, we really need to think about, rather than how to clean up what's in there, it's really about how to prevent it getting in. And, and that's really the big challenge for us going forward. So this is, of course, a global problem. Presumably the solutions have to be global in scale too. Absolutely. And I think one of the reasons that we set up X Expedition and decided to bring together 300 women to go to sea to actually see this problem firsthand is that we realise we need everyone from all over the world. So we have 50 nationalities taking part so far in this mission. And it makes us realise when, you, when you're out there that um, this plastic doesn't belong to any one country or any one of us, but it, it's it's all of us around the world. And, and nature doesn't know political boundaries or cultural borders and and so we really need a global response and um, so with our team we're really working across those boundaries and um, to be able to work on what every country and what every company and what every person wherever they are in the world needs to do to make this problem better and are you finding on the whole that national governments are receptive to what you're telling them I think um, there's still a little way to go with governments. I, I think where we're at at the moment is we have this incredible um, engagement from individuals and, and sort of consumer awareness. There's a lot of people um, just in the last probably two or three years have really woken up to realizing actually there is this problem. It's so far out of sight and out of mind, but we're starting to kind of get what's going on. Um, and then the knock-on effect of that has been that businesses have realized that their consumers are starting to demand products without single-use packaging um, and things that are much better for the environment. Um, but to governments, I think we've still got a little way to go, and they're probably the third sector that is going to um, come into play once industry is able to prove that the solutions out there exist. Um, and then governments actually have something to legislate. So I think we're being heard, but there's still a lot of uh, progress that needs to be made to actually get the legislation that's needed. And in your opinion, is this more about how we dispose of plastics or is it really a question of not even producing them in such vast quantities in the first place? 
Exactly, very much the latter. Um, a lot of our scientific research, we're out there looking at these microplastics that are quite anonymous when you find them. It's just like plastic confetti and you can't work out what it might have been once um, when it was being used on land. And so we're using different types of scientific analysis to try and understand more about where it's come from. Um, is it pieces of plastic that um, have come from our clothing because they're fibres that have washed down the washing machine? Or are they pieces of plastic that might have come from our tyres while we're driving along on the road and they've flaked off and, and ended up down into the sea? And it's really about trying to understand these sources because ultimately preventing it getting into the ocean is, is really hard. We need to go right back to the beginning, to the source of that supply chain, to the drawing board really, and, and try and eliminate the plastic at source. Now, you mentioned it briefly a little earlier, your research expeditions are all female. Why is that? What has sex got to do with plastic pollution? I actually had um, a blood test six years ago to try and understand uh, these chemicals, persistent organic pollutants that are often used in the production of plastic. And um, I was finding in the sea, you know, were they getting into us humans as well? And it turned out I had... 29 of these 35 chemicals that were banned by the United Nations because of their toxicity in my body. But when I started to understand the impact of them, I realized that actually as a woman, having these endocrine disruptors that mimic our hormones are actually a huge problem during pregnancy and we can pass them on to our children. And that's when I thought, wow, this is quite a female-centered issue and decided to set up a project uh, to have women at the helm tackling it. And do you think this is something the medical community is fully aware of, the implications of microplastics on the human body, female bodies in particular? I think it's something that is still very much being researched. There's a lot going on at the moment to try and really understand and um, both the pathways of microplastics, but also the chemicals that are used in the production of a lot of our products that we use every day. And um, what are the pathways that they're getting into us? Is it through direct contact or, or through some other means? Um, and then what is the, the real risk to our health? We know that these chemicals and plastics aren't good for us, but actually, what, you know, what quantities do you need for them to pose a real threat? So there's a lot more research to be done, but I certainly think there's a lot of people who are, who are looking into it to really understand more um, about whether this is something Thing that's contributing to health impacts at the moment or might do in the future. OK, fascinating stuff, I'm afraid. We're going to have to leave it there. Uh, but Emily Penn, uh, Ocean's Advocate and Skipper, uh, thank you very much. You are, of course, also the co-founder of All Female Seaborne Research Project X Expedition.